I was close. I thought you were gonna get left behind. I'm so glad you're okay. That was terrifying. <sighs> I know what you were thinking, but... Never mind. I know I can't talk you out of a mindset that's been built up over a lifetime. I don't think we were ever going to reach an agreement over the final strategy. But in the end, it was thanks to you that we managed to escape. So, thank you for saving us all. Mm. No. I could not have done this on my strength alone. Don't mention it. Looks like everyone got out unscathed, but you all look pretty exhausted. Rest up. There's no hurry to move on from here. As for me, I'm gonna check the area for any unusual activity. She's gone. Paimon didn't even get to say thank you. <sighs> Maybe Aelon really doesn't believe she made a contribution. It seems like she's convinced Xiao saved us all, including her, and she doesn't know what to say to that. And since it's not easy to persuade Xiao of anything, maybe Aelon's just given up trying to talk to him. Xiao, she's criticizing you! I am not! You speak only the truth. I have no quarrel with that. I will keep your words in mind. Really? Well, that's great. I count that as quite an achievement. It was a perilous situation we were faced with underground. And it took every single one of us for any of us to make it out alive. I feel lucky that we didn't lose anyone along the way. Hey, so... Bull Checker still hasn't woken up yet. Surely he's not gonna stay asleep forever. Is he? Let's go check on him. Ah, <sighs> I slept like a rock. Ugh, good times. Huh? Whoa, what you doing? What's going on? Why are you looking at me like that? Are you in any pain? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The head? What about it? Is there any brain damage from the impact? You need to tell us if you're not feeling well. You weren't that bright to begin with, so if we add brain damage to the equation... Oh, brother. What the heck are you guys talking about? I'm fine! I had an epic power nap, and now I feel like a million mora. Huh. I feel like I'm forgetting something, though. Uh... Oh, yeah! Wait, weren't we underground? How did we get back up here? It's a long story. We'll fill you in later. Ito. We're indebted to you, Shinobu, and Ushi. We couldn't have escaped this predicament without your help. I'm the reason you all got caught up in this. Please accept my apologies, and let me find some way to compensate you for the trouble. Bah, crazy talk! You helped us first! Of course we're gonna return the favor. Hey, if it weren't for you, we'd still be in a Liyue jail cell right now. That's not quite correct. You'd be in jail, not me. Mm. <laughs> Good point. Well, okay then. How about this? To celebrate our newfound friendships, how about you let me take you to Leo Harbor for some sightseeing and a proper meal? I like the sound of that. Now that you mention it, whew, I am famished. Oh, I can barely walk here. I'm hungry too, Senpai. Why don't we head straight over? All right, well, I promise I'll take good care of your friends from Inazuma. Take it easy, okay? What we just went through was... a lot. <laughs> oh, wait! Yaelon left already. I was gonna treat her to some tea. Uh, but I'll take this to mean we're square. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm? Oh, yeah? 
Is that right? Wow. Okay, I'll let him know. Traveler, flying lavender melon, Ushi has a couple words he'd like you to pass on for him. What? Oh, I want to hear this. Me too. Count me in. Good idea! Let's do that! Aima never would have guessed that Ushi was so gentle and thoughtful. Never judge a bull by its cover, huh? Oh. <sighs> Sometimes the profoundest truths can also be the simplest. I think Ushi's words may well come in handy. You betcha! Just leave it to us! Alright, Ito. Shinobu? Ushi? Let's go. Oh yeah! Grub time! Mm. See you next time. <sighs> Finished taking care of business? Oh, there wasn't any business. We were just saying goodbye to our friends. <laughs> You're still here. I saw the two Inazumans leave with Yenfei, heading towards Liyue Harbor. Aren't you going with them? We still had some stuff we wanted to say to Xiao. Hmm. I figured as much. I've checked the area. Nothing strikes me as out of the ordinary. Looks like this chapter has come to a close. Now, I just need to take care of the confidentiality issues. <laughs> Let's hope our friends from overseas can keep their mouths shut. For their own sakes. Uh, we got it, we got it! We'll make sure they don't say anything! Please don't hurt them. Oh... You figured me out, huh? <laughs> All right, I'll quit pulling your leg. Everyone really rose to the occasion this time. I won't ever forget what we went through. Where could that strange space have come from? And how has it existed down there undetected for so many years? I have to investigate this further. I have a feeling that whatever lies behind all this runs deep. Maybe so deep that no one can be allowed to know. Also, I think someone helped us out at the last minute. They did a good deed, of course, but... Somehow I couldn't tell anything about them. It must have been someone of great importance. <sighs> anyway, these questions will have to wait for another time. I have some follow-up work to do and reports to make. So it's back to Liyue Harbor for me. See you when I see you. You knew I was waiting for you? Really? Hmm. There's somewhere I want to go. If you have the time, you can join me. Where is it? A place that has to do with the Yakshas. The temple up ahead was built to remember Pervases. Maybe I came here because I had a realization. You mean, back when we were underground? It's hard to put into words. Seeing Bosatius gave me the false impression that I'd traveled back into the past. You could dress up the Yaksha's life and call us valiant warriors, veterans of war. But, the truth is, we are slaughterers. And nothing more. For Bosatius, perhaps dying in the heat of a great battle was no tragedy. And perhaps the same is true for me. After living so long, to die in the act of saving others would not have been a terrible thing. Hmm. So maybe... 
These thoughts are my own form of insanity. Hey, don't say that. Oh, yeah! Bushi wanted us to tell you. It's very important. Hmm? Bushi said he has the power to exorcise demons, so people use him to fend them off. But after he met Ito, he's never left his side. He also said that he doesn't have any grand philosophies. He just thinks we should spend our lives around the people who make us happiest. Maybe there aren't so many rules about how we should or shouldn't live our lives in this world after all. So, he hopes you can come to understand that even though the power of a yaksha may be harmful to other people, it doesn't mean you shouldn't hang out with them. Yep, like people with visions. They have more resistance against your power, right? And, and... Well, uh, anyway, there's loads of people out there who really care about you. <sighs> Suddenly you sound a lot like Bosatius and the others. They used to talk about how they hoped to live a mortal's life once the world was at peace. I think... I was the only one who didn't think that way. The Bosatius recorded in the Fantastic Compass had lost his sanity. He addressed the people around him as Alatus. Minogius, and others. These are the names of the five Yakshas. I am Alatus, and Minogius is General Capesis. The others are Bonanus, or General Chizapis, and Indarius, or General Musatis. I heard that people call the five of us Yakshas, the Guardian Adepti. <laughs> Bosatius and Yelon's ancestors stayed underground to the end. So that space must have read their minds in their last moments as they approached death. Yelon was right in everything she said. Both of our proposals had their drawbacks, and both were sensible suggestions. But the power of that space was far beyond all of us. I couldn't have done all I did without everyone's help. Even in the final moments, it took every bit of my power to break free from that place. Well, Hyman still thinks you are amazing. Yenfei and Yelon are correct. I always prepare for the worst case scenario. This mindset is deeply rooted in me. Even so, it was the most optimistic solution I could think of. If Rex Lapis hadn't saved me in that moment, I don't think I would have been able to escape. In the end, I still had to burden another. But that's how it should be, right? You've known Zhang Li, uh, Rex Lapis, for such a long time. And you've helped him before, so he helped you back. What's the big deal? Perhaps. In the moment that we escaped from that space, I could sense what was left of Bosatius' memory. If I had to say what I gained from this trip, I think that would be it. It's good that one more person will remember him. Minogius, mm, where have you been? <sighs> Brother Yaksha, you're confused again. I've told you countless times, I am Boyang. A thaumaturge who fought with you in the chasm. Boyong? Boyong? You are Boyong. But who am I? <laughs> Believe me, I want to know as much as you do. Here we are, the two who agreed to stay here together, and I can't even call you by your name. It's a shame. Stay here? No. No, you have to leave. Nonsense, Brother Yaksha. We're down here for good now. Don't you remember? It's too late to have regrets. The seal can't be broken. The seal... Ah, oh, yes. I'm a Yaksha who came here to fight. Brother, brother, 
Are you okay? <laughs> Look at the state of me. I don't think I've got long now. <laughs> We're the only two left. Don't go dying on me. <sighs> you know, today I saw my family down here. Clear as day. What do you think? Am I losing my mind now, too? Hmm. Boy, young. Do you want to go home? I made my decision to leave Zhong Zhao up on the surface. I obviously... <sighs> of course I want to go home. I must have... family, too. You mean brothers and sisters? I'm sure you do. Brothers and sisters. Yes, but who am I? And where is my family? I'm... Brother! What's wrong? Hang in there. It's just you and me, don't... Don't die before me. Alatus. Is that you? Who's Alatus? Your memory's going again. <coughs> I'm sorry. You all have to see me in this state. Brother! Brother! Look. There's someone over there. Who are they? They're... They're my... My... Remember now, I know you. <laughs> My brothers and sisters have come for me, Boy Young. You're, you're awake? At least. At least tell me your name. Brother! Brother Bosatius. <laughs> hey, Bosatius. <laughs> Bosatius. I... I am Bosatius, and my destiny is to make the ultimate sacrifice. Did so much today, but I don't need to hold back as much when I talk to you. Have you ever had a moment where you felt like you were aware of your destiny? The potential of life? The approach of death? Whatever it might have been, by now, I have accepted that destiny is the one disaster that the Yaksha know most keenly of all. They are destined to misery. And yet, we have no fear. Xiao... It matters not. Rex Lapis had said that you are a witness. It is right that the events of the world are relayed to you. Bonanus, Minogius, and Indarius all perished. And only Bosatius' fate was unknown. This has always stung my heart like a thorn. That is why I went to the chasm, despite being fully aware of the danger. Now that I know what happened in the chasm back then, I can finally put this matter to rest. Before we left that place, I picked up a stone. I thought if I could take it out with me, I would place it in the temple to Pervases in memory of Bosatius. Unfortunately, the stone did not survive. Pervases died in the Archon War thousands of years ago. He was younger than us. And Bosatius was very sad when he passed. Too many Yakshas have become casualties of battle. We are like a flock of birds. Scattered to the four corners of the world. And in the end, as Bonanus said, it's rare for a Yaksha to find repose for their soul. Bosatius, Boyang, and all those soldiers. Heroes. I like that word. Maybe the world will never be free of disaster. But there is good in the world, too. Even the darkest hearts have room for those they cherish. I accept your advice. From this day on, heroes will always look out for each other. <laughs>